Uh, hi, Mark. This is Trumphy. He says, a couple of questions I hope you can help with. One, I'm a Gold subscriber and I've watched the video where you explain your sheets. However, are you able to go through how you actually bet with the sheet? I assume you just look for overlays in the top four selections. Are you able to go through a meeting with your sheet and how you bet on the day? Don't need amounts and you can cherry pick a good day. It's just about me understanding the best way to use the sheet from the person that makes the sheet if this is possible. So that's question one. Uh, question two we'll dispense with, does Gordo use Betfair? It sounds like you and GP use it all the time to get out of positions in play, et cetera but I haven't really heard Gordo talk about it too much in that way. You want to answer that, Gordon? Uh, no, I watch it because um, it's a good indicator of where the market moves, but I don't use it. Hmm. God, well, God, so use God it, has, use God has no bookie in him at all, and you have no bookie in you either too, you, God. No, no bookie in me. He's no yeah, I, I, yeah, I look, I, occasionally I get very excited and start you know, pressing the lay button on a horse because it's just a horse that seems ridiculously short to me and keeps firming. But generally, I don't... Fucking, I much. fucking lay them when I like them. By the way, guys, I, I'm sort of lying there because I do use it because if I'm looking at $12 on the fair when the best I can get with the corpse is $8, um, I do shitty. use it. So, um, but you might only get 100 or 200 a match and you just say, in the bin type thing. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like I, I use City Bet as well. Um, which is a good service. Although their right. comms have gone up recently. Okay. Um, that's so when you say you use City Bet, just on Hong Kong racing or? No, 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 no. Um, it's actually weird. Like I'll do it for um, favourites that I think are going to pay longer on the S tab. <laughs> But I'm not even okay, sure well, that, how it works out because I don't do it myself. So I don't have a Yes, understand. I understand. You've got access to it. Yeah. And and you are forecasting horses that will pay long on STAB or relatively long on STAB and <laughs> say, well, therefore, City Bet's the place to bet. I'm just having a guess and it's always on favourites. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Right, well, let's have a look at my sheet from yesterday, see if I can answer a few questions for Trumphy. So, um, Let's get rid of that. And it's a good nickname, isn't it? Trumphy. It is an interesting nickname. I think it's, so, at the moment, I think it's a terrible nickname. Why? So, well, it's, yeah. Don't you love the Donald? He's, he's entertaining. <laughs> Best ever. Nah. Right, so he's raised one yesterday, which I did the market uh, for. And um, I tipped number four on top. I suggested backing it. And... I marked the favourite number eight headline at 280 with an expected of 230. So when I do that, I then go and look at the market. So let's see the market that I looked at, which is this market, because I put the prices in my ratings to win. Uh, and as you can see, headliner is $1.90 at, uh, at, um, at 115%. I'm expecting it to be 230. So I'm thinking there is some slack there in headliner, which does offer a potential bet pre-post. I'll tell you what, um, if, I, if I was a... Do you guys lay headliner? Mark, did you uh, lay it or uh, not? No, no, because it was... Well, it was a blower. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm but talking about was... laying horses that start short, that keep firming. So, you know, I, I don't want to chase horses out. <laughs> you're, uh, you're, you're looking for market overcorrection. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I have marked at 280. I didn't like it, but I, you know, yeah. just, you know. So that seemed like a reasonable place marker in that race. Um, so in this race, I'm obviously focused on number four because I've suggested backing it. So it's a, a horse of focus. Um, I did, in this case, I didn't take the 650 pre-post, as in race morning, because it's a first starter. I'm not, I'm not sufficiently confident about my assessment there. I want back it. There was seven dollars. You would have taken seven dollars, Mark, because there was seven dollars yeah, available. Yeah, I know. But what I'm saying, Gord, is that it's a first starter. So obviously, I'm not dealing with a situation where I'm very comfortable about how I've assessed it. I'm less comfortable because it's a first starter. Hmm. Um, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have numbers to to support it being in a particular place in so, the market. But Mark, what what price would it need? to be for you to back it 
take the price? Uh, $8 I would have been tempted by. Okay. I just, I'm looking for a bit of a premium because it's a first starter. As far as the other horses in the race are concerned, you can see I've marked the, the horse that ran the distant last Tempestus there, $6. It's the only other opportunity in the race. But I've also marked it as an expected $11. So, I, I, you know, I will have to have something on that, not pre-post. It's just a situation on Betfair in the last couple of minutes where I'll, um, I'll look at having something on a horse that at around about my expected price in that case. But in this particular race, I didn't bet pre-post because of the uncertainty of the, of the first data um, situation. Um, but I'm looking in the last minute of Betfair to actually position myself on number four and to a lesser extent number nine. Um, unfortunately, I was chasing it in Egyptian Tycoon in the last minute rather than, you know, I like to see them go out, then I can have more on them. Uh, in this case, Egyptian Tycoon was tight, tightening in the last minute. Partly because Mountain Yard Ma was all over it and Gordo's gold as well. It was just a feast. Um, that, was, that, was, that was a great little all three of us sort of keen and um, that was lovely. I, I was surprised. Can I ask you a question, Mark? Or are you yeah, 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 on a diatribe right yeah, now? Yeah, no. um, it, both trials at home. So when I saw that you'd found it, I was like, man, this doesn't normally fit Mark's normal parameters. So I, I mean, I, I like the trials which is why I found it, but I was surprised you found it. All right, well, okay. So there's a little bit of gourd there and it had a 10, 50 metre trial. Uh, it had only had two trials. Um, Hewan had had a 900 metre trial at Rose Hill, but then come back to the pro ride at Warwick Farm. Um, I, I never find blue colours. Glenn found it strongly, it ran a decent race. Um, headline as well exposed. Tempestus I thought would lead, which is why I fitted it into the market there. Uh, and I, I sort of thought the track would play lead and inside early. And the Hawks horse, um, I went back and had a look at its original trial. It was terrible. I, I thought it was terrible. I'm not really a trial watcher. And then it's run comfortably on the pro ride, just straight back there. Yeah. Uh, it was more that the Egyptian tycoon had the 1050 meter trial. That was that was the, that 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 was a trial to sort of hang your hat. So if, if that 1050 meter trial had been away from home, you would have priced it three dollars. Ah, yeah, 350, yeah. All right, race, come to race two. And here I have basically, well, I've got four chances in the race. And I've done my market there. And then I've looked at the pre-post, which looks like this. And I'm going, well, there's an obvious bet for me to have there. Number eight, mirror view, pre-post at $13. I've marked it 450, I expect it to be $6. Um, as far as the others are concerned, there's no real activity there. Um, they're pretty much in their spot. So I have a bet pre-post on the review. And if she gets longer in the last minute on bet fair, I'll top up. Um, and there wasn't really an opportunity to have another bet. Terramides um, sort of got to 4.50 late on the fair, which I'll I'll for a horse- tell you what, Mark, whichever Blake sent this in, it was a good day to send it in. Christ Almighty, you're on fire. Bloody hell, Jesus. Well, yeah, it, um, there it is, third up at home, blinkers on, broke its maiden last start. I, I was a bit against number two because I thought that she just posied up there on a day we had to get to the outside fence, posied up on the outside of the leader and was just there. And I know she'd Mark, been a subsequent winner, but yeah. I thought that was an interesting one to line up there because, you know, we had Smirk come out and win off that run. Yeah. And um, it, you would have watched the video and just saying, well, Smirk's run was far superior to Terramides. Um, and the run of a horse that would, could go to town and do something well, Terramides sort of got all favours and wasn't strong through the line. Yeah. It was interesting. Who, who did you find there, Glenn? Uh, in this race here? Yeah. Belarus? Or no? No, Renover uh, came out on top of the first. I had Renover on top, but I knew it was a bit of a. Pluggers run last up, but thought that Terramedes sort of came down the right part of the track. Yeah. Just right, well, so basically, it was a situation where I got positioned early. Um, there was no, nothing extra late, um, and there was nothing extra to look at late. Race three. So, Mark, uh, I, was, I got another. I got another. I quite. I like talking about your sheet. So, um, obviously, you've marked as favourite Belarus, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you didn't entertain it at all because there was no purr there for you? Or yeah, well, it's, it, uh, look, I, I, I've got marked 350. I expect 460. I'd sort of need like $4 ish. 
Um, you know, she was sort of around the mark. I'm looking, if, you know, if she's if she's a blower late, um, I'd certainly position her. Um, yeah, it, it's just a marginal thing. It's like a gut fit to feel but, thing. But, the, but Mark, if Terra Medes, and I think this is an important question, if it's five dollars, it's still not yeah. a bet for you. I, I will think about it. I will. I will sort of like reevaluate it because, and this is why, because she's been marked opening. She's been marked pre-post favorite. So I'll go. Is this a pre-post favorite that they've tripped over themselves to lay and and gone too far? Um, so it's a bit, there's a bit of gut feel to do with uh, assessing that horse as well. Okay. I have back. I have backed those horses in the past, but I, I won't back all of them. It's just. Yeah. It's sort of an on-the-spot um, decision. Um, we go to race three. Um, this was no good for me. Glenn was very Glenn was very strongly against this favourite, which struggled all the way around. Toes on the nose. Got led by the uh, wild stale last time. Man, Glenn, that was fantastic information. That that was that was really good. Yeah. Um, when you so, watch the parade, it was easy to send them out. Yeah, so look, I'm you know I'm keen on toes of the nose because I think it's second up's going to lead, and um, Hollywood North's been back to Kembla and Dark Rebel. I've sort of had enough of it. You know, it's a back marker, back in grade doesn't really uh, excite me. Um, it went well. I went to look at the prices, and there was nothing to bet on. Obviously, there pre-post, and I'm pretty um, sure I took better than eight dollars Royal Ballet. I yeah, I'm just. I, I, yeah. yeah, you probably did good. I would have done this race at like nine thirty. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So they, they, you know, these are the prices as I go. Um, so it's a race where I want to back the favourite. Um, that's number seven. Um, and it didn't offer me any sort of premium to begin with. I wasn't offered any premium late. It's a situation where I'll have just a, a bog standard bet on it. And you know, maybe hope that it gets right out in the last minute so I can have more on it. Um, and a situation where I, I've got number 10 second pick there. Um, it was backable late on the fair, so I'll have something on that, but not a heavy, not a, a sort of not a, a race I want to get involved in, but the prices sort of didn't let me get involved that much. Moving on to race four, and um, this is my last. Yeah, this is, this is a horse. Get, can't, can't go on the wet. Yeah. Who's that? Michael. Well, just just pull out all its very fresh runs and then ignore the rest of its runs. Ignore any runs it's had within sort of 40 days of its last start or 35 days of its last start, and, and suddenly it looks like a bloody genius. Um, oh, yeah, but it's never, they've always been on good track, Mark. I had no, um, I had no info. In this race, right, first of all, I went, here's the one, girl mate. And then I pulled it apart and I pulled it apart and I could, sort of couldn't get, uh, couldn't get anywhere with it. Um, and I ended up coming back to Stoical because it was last I went on the track, kept fresh, wide draw at the thousand. Um, and I went to the uh, pre-post and let me on, 750. Uh, ended up BSPing about that as, as well. So I managed to get a little bit more on that. But it was a horse I wanted to back. And the other horse that I'm going to back in the pre post situation there, despite the fact it's not in my numbers, is Nikki's song because it's I've assessed at $8. So I expect it to be found in $6. And it's $11 in the pre post. So I'll have something on that. It's not what not we call a primary, or it's just, it's just a here's, a here's an opportunity because I'm thinking differently to the market. Uh, no other opportunities there pre post. And, uh, and, that, and that that was fantastic work there again. That, that was really good. And I, I should have followed you in there. I should have found a way. But I was that keen on Girl Mania, and I was on at sensational prices. It was my second yeah. primary of the day, and I was on at great prices. Um, and then Glenn didn't have it even have it in his numbers, I don't think, or yeah. maybe fourth or something like that. What was the story there, Glenn? The poor trainer looked like a rat. <laughs> Yeah, she probably she probably used her, you know, first up, you know, she went really well, <laughs> albeit maybe with the bias of Hawkesbury, but um, she might have just used all her eggs there. Uh, let's get to race five, where I've got I've, I've, I've no I've got no more tagged bets for the day, but so I do this race and um, I'm trying to be kind as possible to the Lassafiel, who 
Um, I've had str- I struggled to find it at Hawkesbury. I sort of struggled to find it here. I, I didn't um, get how firm that was. Like, if I was a layer, I, I would have been gapping it. I'm sure Glenn well, probably did. So. No, it was, it was funny. It's the first time I've ever seen it at the parade where I said every horse is perfect and I got no selections because every horse paraded perfectly for me. And the last thing I wanted to do was send out number six on top. It just made me feel all. But awful. I'm thinking if they're all looking great, then you lay the short price favourite. Possibly that's the way I think. I just had the race off good. I just had the race <laughs> off and I wanted my punters to have the race off. As it turned out, the, the winner. You know, Gage is too good with these trialers, the way they're under the bat all the way down the state in the trial, and they come out, they parade, parade really well, and I wasn't surprised it, it won, but... By the way, that's seriously aggressive pricing, Mark. On what? On which horse? I suppose on which there's one? not much else in the race. On number well, one. Well, yet again, have a look at the in-runs there, Gord. Yeah, you've got a clear leader. Yeah, and so it's one of those situations where you know, you get aggressive about those sorts of scenarios because it's 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 got a control. I mean, I know it's out of gate one, but you know it's gay, and um, so it's it's got a thirteen in run with a different trainer. Um, yeah, yeah. In, in this yeah. race, yeah. So yet again, I've I've I've, I've said three fifty expect four sixty. I haven't got it on top. We've got number six on top, but. Um, Obviously, it's it's what I'm going. I'm going to I'm going to take six fifty uh, pre post. Um, it sort of traded around the six the low sixes just in the minute before they jumped. Or they got a little bit more on, but then it firmed up. And are you trying? Are you trying to get your early bets on on the fair mark, or are you no, betting the corp? No, no, but betting the corp. So those those okay. prices I'm putting in directly from uh, Dynamic Odds. The other horse that I had something on was Holstein, which um, I. Um, Marked eleven dollars and expected twenty six, but as you can see, it was forty one dollars with um, with the opening prices, and there's nothing else to really do there. So that you know, if well. this keeps up, Glenn, how about we ask for a pay rise, eh? Why? Can we get a pay rise? What do you mean? Oh, against if Mark keeps backing these winners at these oh. prices, I reckon oh, we get I'm a pay there. rise, mate. <laughs> All right, so race race six. Um, I went looking for Ar- Arabellini. Uh, I think that I looked at that four horse field at Wild and went, "This is a really strong race." How the fuck like didn't Shameless Miss win that race? It was dead set trucking. Yeah, it was trucking. Yeah. Uh, it was trucking indeed. Um, so I looked at the prices here, and um, Arabellini's five dollars. I'm expecting it to be three fifty. So I've had something on it there, and I've also backed Feel the Rush. Which is around about the price I need. I mean, I've marked it three dollars, but I'm expecting four sixty. So I'm, it's sort of like I'm saying I want a bit of a premium. Um, Did you mark down Arabellini for the jockey, or because of the, her taking weight off on the heavy track, you gave it a neutral mark? Um, I didn't. No, I didn't mark it down, Gord. Um, I, 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 honestly, I went looking for it because I thought this is the horse. Sh- I, I, you know, Shameless Miss has gone to Newk. Uh, Seamus misses out of Cannon Drown at Kenzie did together in 1800. Then it went to Newcastle, to uh, Gold Coast, and then to Ipswich. I'm, I'm sort of looking to get, be against it. Sound of Cannons, everyone knows what it is. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I understand why it was so popular, but it just, you know. And Feel the Rush, well, it was going to be hated by the market, or it should be hated by the market, because it had 62 and a half on a heavy track. But it was coming off two pretty decent runs. So I'm surprised. <laughs> it just flopped out and didn't go at all. Um, so a pretty hollow race where the leader just you know led and kept going and no chases. Yet again, it's um, you know Kensington. If you look for leaders and on pace, it's it, you know, it can be a um, hot little card to to play. Um, the seventh, and I've, I've sort of missed the winner here. Um, I've um, allowed myself to find Lechbart coming back from Brisbane, um, and. Probably the other horse I went looking for a bit was made by Khan, who I forgave for its first up wide run at Hawkesbury. Um, and so I looked at the prices there, and made by Khan is nine dollars, left about seven dollars. Um, I'm waiting on made by Khan, but I'm certainly going to take the seven dollars left part. Um, and it sort of ended up shorter, so I didn't really top up on it, so not too much damage done there. Uh, the winner went like a bloody bomb, high baller, just Gwenda's horse is flying. Um, some figures. Yeah. From ratings to win. 
Last six months, 155 bets for 17 winners at um, minus 8.9, so profitable. And last 30 days, 37 bets for five winners at negative 21. All right, what's well, so wrong? Um, it just must be certain horses like our uh, our friend from Hawkesbury that uh, sat three deep, but um, uh, Lukey Luke. And uh, yeah, this high baller is going really well as well. Uh, Mark, she's um, obviously they're long odds, but um, she, she, she's pretty good when she brings them to town, I would think. She just seems to be training winners away from Kimber. In fact, there hasn't been that much racing at Kimber, but um, yeah. Get to the last. There wasn't really an opportunity in the last. Um, what have I done here? I, I'm looking at a market that doesn't really offer me an opportunity, but on the um, on the pre-post. Um, and it ended up just being, it was a race that I sort of wanted to try the favourite. Didn't really get there. It was always trading around the 250, 260 mark. And so I just let, let, let the race through the keeper and no bet in the last. So what I'm trying to look for, Trumpy, is I'm, I'm, I'm saying the horses that I've nominated as bets, obviously I'm keen to be on them, preferably at an overlay, and if not, bet for your late. Other horses, I'm mindful of the prices I've marked them. I'm mindful of whether I expect them to be shorter or longer. If I expect them to be longer, I sort of need more of a premium. If I expect them to be shorter, I don't need that premium. Um, and that's how yesterday turned out, which, as it turned out, was a really good day. Yeah, I think there's a big point there, guys, and that you got to back yourself. So Mark was saying he doesn't get scared of the blood. He's he's just getting a better better price about horses he thinks have a chance. Um, don't be don't be scared of the blood. Mark, well, I think I think that that's where lots of yeah, the God talks about early mistakes, and then there are late mistakes. The late mistakes are when the, the layers just get the, the trip over themselves in the last minute or two. Yeah, there seems to be momentum with both firmers and layers. So, like, really late, it's like <laughs> over-firming on, on the shorties and over-blowing on the longies. Like, I, I've told people that are using the fair, and I said, just use the fair for um, for blowers late. Because hmm. they over-blow. Um, and, and just stick to your other form and taking your early prices. 